Welcome to this celebration of Christmas. Today we remember that God gave us the gift of Jesus as a tiny baby. Let us open our hearts to God's surprises and joy this Christmas evening. Reminding us that God keeps promises and gives us life. Because Jesus is the Prince of Peace and calls God's children to work for peace in God's world. grows joy. We share joy because Jesus is born for us and through him there will be everlasting joy on earth. Remembering that Jesus loves us and showed love to all people in every time and place. Yeah. 
Let's take a minute to listen to the story of the very first Christmas Eve. Hear me, people of Jerusalem. A decree from Caesar Augustus. All the world must be counted and taxed. Every man must go to the city of his birth. There he will be counted and taxed. Bethlehem is just too far away, Mary. But we have no choice. Oh, I know. But it's not safe for you to travel. And what if the baby is born along the way? Then you'll just have to pay the tax for three instead of two. <laughs> Please, sir, my wife. The, the baby is about to... What do you expect me to do? Build a room on the back of the inn tonight? But my wife, the baby... Read my lips. No room! Baby? A baby? Did you say she's about to have a baby? <laughs> well, now I, I do have a place for you. At least it's, it's warm and safe. We're grateful to you, sir. I just can't say no to anybody, can I? <laughs> this is no way to run a business. People having babies in stables. <laughs> I'm out of my mind. Mary, don't be afraid. I'm not. I have you by my side. <laughs> Do you know that's your name? Do you know who you are? You're here at last. That's all that matters. Sleep now, Mary. He's a strong, beautiful boy. Sleep. Now go to sleep. Fear not. I bring you good tidings of great joy, a message for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. We must go to the city at once. But what about the flock? Oh, the sheep will be safe enough. Tonight, the savior of the world was born.
Jesus. We come to Christmas to bask in the light and warmth of God's light. to tell you the story of Michael Mouse. A long, long time ago, on the night when Jesus was born, there was a little mouse called Michael. Now I hope you're not afraid of mice because this was a very friendly mouse. Now he had big ears and a long tail, tiny eyes, and a red woolly jacket to keep out the cold. He was sleeping in his tiny house just above a stream. Suddenly, he was wakened by a strange noise. He looked up into the sky and saw that it was bright, bright as day. He checked his clock. It was still the middle of the night. And then he heard, Michael thought he would like to go find out what the singing was all about. So he scampered along to the owl, a good friend of his, who lived up a tree and had a good view of everything that went on. To it, to oo, to it, to oo. Hi, owl. What's all the noise about? It's all because a little baby is born in the village of Bethlehem. Everyone is going to see. Bethlehem. That's miles away. Do you think I should go? Oh, I'm sure you would find it a memorable experience. To it, to oo, to it, to oo. So off went Michael. There weren't any buses or trains in those days, so he had to swim across two rivers and climb hills all on his own. It was a long way to go. At last, he arrived, and he stood in the yard, just next to the stable where the baby was about to be born. He was exhausted, and his little red suit was now very dirty. He gave himself a lick to clean himself the best he could. After all, he wanted to, the baby to see him at his best. While he was sorting himself out, along came some sheep. Hello, you. I mean... Mrs. Oo? I'm going to see the wee baby. Can I come with you? Michael was thinking he would get a good view if he stood on the top of the sheep's shoulders. Have you got a present? No. Then you can't come with me. What kind of present have you got, Mrs. Oo? Wool to keep the baby warm. Ba, ba, ba. And into the stable walked Miss Oo and her friends. As they left, Michael heard another sound. Well, hello, Miss Cow. How do you do? And where are you off to? I'm here to see the baby. Would you give me a ride on your back so that I can see him too? Do you have a present? No. Then you can't come too. What kind of a present have you got, Miss Cow? I've got some milk in case the family gets thirsty. So Mrs. Cow moved her way into the stable. Michael wasn't getting in, and he was very sad. Michael was humming away to himself when he heard another visitor. Cluck, cluck! Well, hello, hen. 
Miss Hen to you, son, if you don't mind. Okay, okay, don't get your feathers ruffled. I'm just surprised to see you here. Cluck, cluck, no surprise at all. I'd like to see the, the baby just as much as anyone else. Cluck, cluck. That's why I'm here, just in case you were wondering. What are the chances of going in together? You see, I don't know anybody. Have you a present for the baby? No, I don't. Well, you can't come with me. At least I've brought some eggs with me. That's my gift to the child. But I don't see any eggs. That's because I haven't laid them yet. Cluck, cluck. And away she clucked into the stable. Michael got sadder and sadder. He wanted to get in, but he didn't know how. So he thought he'd walk around for a bit, and eventually he found himself right outside the stable door. He looked up, and you'll never guess what was staring him straight in the face. Meow. It was a big ginger tomcat with smelly breath. Just what are you after? I'm just here to see the baby, honest. You're here to see the baby, hey? Have you got a present for the baby? No, I haven't. Well then, you're not getting in. Well, what about you? Do you have a present for the baby? I am employed to keep little hooligans like you far, far away. Take this! Michael scampered away just in time and ran to the side of the stable where he hid. Michael puffed breathlessly as he crouched hiding. While he was puffing and panting, he saw some other visitors arrive at the stable. Not hens or sheep or cows, but shepherds. Michael watched as these new visitors entered the stable. And again he felt very, very sad. And he began to cry. A big tear dribbled down the end of his nose and onto his red jacket. Then suddenly, something made him look up. It was a chink of light in the stable wall. Michael it was a wondered hole. whether he might climb up to it. It was very high, and as he climbed higher and higher, the wind got louder and louder. Then, when Michael reached the hole, he squeezed his head in. Then he squeezed his body in. And then he stuck his bottom in the hole and let his tail dangle down outside. It took him a little while to get used to the light because it was quite bright in the stable. But as soon as his eyes had adjusted, the first thing he noticed was the baby in the arms of Mary, his mother. And Mary was looking over at him. She gave him a big wink. Then she got Joseph, the little baby's father, to look over at Michael. And he gave him a big wink and then said, ever so gently, Thanks, little mouse. That puzzled Michael. Why would Joseph thank him? That hole in the wall was too high for me to reach. And we were worried in case Jesus would feel a draft and catch cold. Michael was really thrilled. He had brought the baby a gift after all. He felt especially pleased now that he could see everything. He saw the sheep giving their wool to keep the wee baby warm. He saw the cow giving her milk to the family when they were thirsty. Then he saw the hen give her newly laid eggs to Mary. And he saw the shepherds and the wise men give their presents. And everybody looked so happy. Even the big ginger tomcat with the smelly breath. Michael stayed in the hole in the wall all night until the morning came. Then when the wind had stopped howling and without any fuss, he climbed down and headed for home. By the time he got back to the stream where he lived, he was very tired. But his friends were there waiting to greet him. To it, to you, I've heard all about it, you know. I've spoken to the sheep. I've had a word with the cow. Listened for ages to one of the hens. They told me all about it. And they told me how you didn't get to see the baby because you didn't have a present for him. Oh, yes, but I did see the baby said Michael. But I thought you didn't have a present. What did you give him? I gave him me, for as long as he needed me. Then Michael turned and disappeared into his little hole at the side of the stream. And that's where the story ends, with Michael's words, I gave him me, for as long as he needed me. Let us pray. 
Thank you, God, for the wonderful gift of your son, Jesus, as we celebrate his birthday. Help us to remember Jesus as we give and receive gifts, taking time to pray for each person and for those who have nothing. Help us, God, to fill this Christmas with you and your love, your peace, your hope, and your joy. Amen. As we celebrate the birth of baby Jesus, watch and wait, for the manger will sing with a new baby's cry, and angels will proclaim a new age. Peace be with us as we celebrate a Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm.